A couple of hours ago, Football Manager transitioned from a beta version into a public release version. I call the beta engine a crossing simulator. So have I changed my mind? My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. This is the channel where I do content on the game Football Manager. You'll find tips, tricks, hacks, guides. You'll also see me streaming three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on another channel called Daljit's Moments. I also stream on Twitch occasionally where I play games with you, PvP, Football Manager. So if you want to have some fun and laughs, join me there. Well, what gives me this insight into the match engine? Well, I'm also the training and tactics moderator on the SI forums. I've been doing this for many years. And yes, I occasionally get to chat with the developers and find out what's going on with the game. Does this access depend on me having to say nice things about the game? No, not once. In fact, I've been known to be quite critical of the game in the past. I don't plan for this to be a long video. We're going to cut to the chase. We're going to talk about the flaws I highlighted in my previous video. Go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. And I'm going to talk about whether those flaws were addressed in this version of the game. In the first video, I had some issues with the way passes were being made in central midfield. Almost every single pass would be going out wide. We'd see a loads and loads of crosses. Um, it became unbearable watching the inside forward turn into a kind of a winger. Um, it just meant that one of our roles was not effective anymore. Well, good news. The public release version, I'm seeing a variety of passes being played from central midfield. Sometimes some of these passes are going into the channels for the inside forward to attack. We've got this Kevin De Bruyne kind of uh, diagonal passes that also <laughs> land at the right foot of the inside forward so that he can drive into the box and score goals. So I'm glad to say that right now the passing focus seems to have improved. There is um, a bit of an improvement in the way the inside forward plays. There is one small caveat. Some of these roles may not be dribbling as much as we might want them to. The inside forward, when he receives the ball, doesn't always cut inside and take on players. He attacks the space more than he attacks the player. Um, this is a tough fix for SI to do. I'm hoping that they tweak this in a future match engine update. Right now, inside forwards are choosing when to make these kind of runs which gives us a bit more uh, intelligence in the off-the-ball movement of some of these roles. In FM21, everyone was complaining it was too difficult to cross the ball. In FM22, the beta engine, it was too easy to cross the ball. So you can imagine the kind of a challenge as I have to do when, they, when they're trying to balance this. Um, in the public release version, I'm glad to see a lot of mishit crosses. You see, that's the thing about crossing in the game. When it's successful, you don't always see the crosses finding their mark. And I'm very happy to see miss hit crosses even from top players in the game. Near post corners were an issue in the beta. There's no doubt about it. Defenders were just scoring way too many from the near post. So much so that we'd have some central defenders stopping the goal scoring charts simply by hitting the ball into the back of the net. Now, we know near post corners are also deadly in real life. However, you don't often find a defender topping goal scoring charts from near post corners alone. This is a challenge that SI have had to deal with for the last couple of years. Now, I still feel that near post corners are still quite accurate. Um, defenders who have got very good jumping reach, heading and aggression seem to score a lot of goals from near post corner routines. This is something that SI will need to address in a forthcoming patch. I hope it comes out soon. Long throws have an element of luck in them. A player of six may be able to reach the penalty area, forcing the goalkeeper into a save if he's lucky with his long throw. However, players with an attribute of 12 and 13 should easily be able to send the long throw into the penalty area and make it a dangerous weapon. So, fantasy draft players are probably going to enjoy using long throws in their matches. In the beta, I was a bit concerned about how the pressing was working. Now in the full release, I've noticed that my team is able to put pressure on opposition players high up the pitch, forcing turnovers and giving ourselves goal scoring opportunities. However, there is something strange happening. I could be playing an attacking game, dominating a match with shots and chances, even the scoreline. However, you'll find the defensive team sometimes 
having higher possession. This is a issue that as I have acknowledged, and I think it's a complicated issue for them to go and solve. It will require some balancing issues, including trying to find the ghost that's running around while I'm playing my matches. It's a very interesting little dilemma that they find themselves in. I mean, I heard of Easter eggs, but having a ghost in the game, that's kind of new. There are some other issues with the match engine and some of these are revolve around possession numbers for some defensive teams. However, these are going to be a challenge to fix because they're going to toss the entire balance of the match engine out of whack. And I think SI are going to do this very carefully because at the moment we are seeing some very exciting uh, play happening on the pitch. Uh, it does suggest that attacking formations, attacking setups are going to be the flavor for FM22. I am enjoying the match engine of Football Manager 22 more than 21 right now because I feel that there are more things that I can do to swing a game. The Data Hub is a fantastic addition. It gives me information as to where my tactical systems might have some weaknesses. I can address them going to certain matches. I can even see whether or not my defensive actions are leading to gains in possession high up the pitch. All that information just feeds into my tactical soul and allows me to, you know, modify some of my tactics for upcoming matches. And I feel that that gives me a lot of control, control that I was missing in FM21. This is how I feel about FM22. I'm enjoying it. I love Deadline Day. I love a lot of the changes that they have made to the game. I think the match engine is definitely better than FM21's, but that's my point of view. If you're watching this video to decide whether or not to get the Game Football Manager, well, I just shared my perspectives with you. These are the things that probably irk me. But you need to try the demo yourself because you could find uh, different things that either impress you or, you know, you might detest about the game. So that's a decision you need to make yourself. But if you do decide to get Football Manager 22, Tuesdays, Twitch, look me up. We'll play public draft together. Yes. We've had loads of people come in on the last few drafts and I'm looking forward to playing with you. You guys, stay safe, take care of yourselves. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.